Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is the best and worst uses for the Cineform codec, also known as how come my proxies are so freaking huge? All right, I want to start with a shout out to my buddy Ronald Schwanenberg, who uh, supplied me with these amazing DJI shots from the Netherlands. He is the Dutch digital dude, uh, and he's got some incredible footage. Okay, so Adobe released the Cineform codec as part of the install for Premiere Pro a while back. It's a QuickTime-based codec that does not require QuickTime to be installed. So you can just install Premiere Pro and you'll have the Cineform codec. If you don't know the Cineform codec, uh, it's now owned by GoPro. Before that, it, it was a Cineform codec owned by Cineform. And Premiere Pro uses it in its basic form, but it actually has enormous amounts of metadata that uh, can be used for other things like stereoscopic view and all of that. I want to explore some of the best and worst case uh, uses for this. The idea behind using something like Cineform is the term is called a mezzanine codec. That means a codec that's an all around good use codec that is not necessarily lossless. It's not uncompressed, but it sure is not compressed like H.264. Um, it doesn't benefit you at all if you have H.264 footage that came from a drone or came from a DSLR to convert that to Cineform. There's no benefit. You're just gonna make giant files for no use. And I'm gonna show you an example of the difference in size. But uh, there are some very good uses for that. Let's go and have a look at some of this footage here. So as I'm flying along here, this is um, incredible DJI footage. And this is all 4K. H.264. This is highly compressed MPEG-4 files that uh, are playing back okay because if you notice over here I've got my proxy button turned on and I've already made proxies and I'll show you that setting in a minute. But these are really great shots and this isn't a complicated edit. So let's say that you felt that you wanted to make these files smaller and you thought that that format, the Cineform uh, format, was a good choice. Well, let's go have a look here at these choices. So here's that the first clip that was there. Here it is. And if we look at the file size, we can see down here at the bottom is 1.31 gigabytes in size. I also use a, a little tool. So if I right click here, this is Media Info and you can get it for both Mac and Windows. And what I like about this is in the tree view, I can get a quick look over here at the format and I can also get a, a quick look down here at the size. So you can see this is a 4K clip. MPEG-4 shot from a DJI, and it looks pretty darn big, 1.31 gigabytes in size. Well, let's go look at another one, and I'll show you that I converted this one. So let's look at 37, um, and this one is 171, so it's a shorter clip. It's the same size physically, but it is a shorter clip. So you can see right there, it's 23 seconds. It's train footage. Okay, so some people might be thinking, well, this is a 4K clip. Let's go look at media info again. And this is MPEG-4 4K clip. Why don't I convert that to Cineform? Well, here it is converted to Cineform. And you'll notice down at the bottom, it's over a gigabyte in size. So we went from 171 megabytes to over a gigabyte. And when I open this up, you're not going to see any difference at all. You can't add more information at a higher rate, a higher quality uh, codec. And Cineform is a much, much better uh, codec. But if you've already shot in DSLR or H.264, MPEG-4, highly compressed, then you're not going to add anything other than file size. So let's look at a good use for the Cineform codec. Let's go back into Premiere Pro and 
over here, I've got an After Effects comp. And I made this for Ronald, so it's a, it's a little windmill. And you can see it stutters as it's playing back because this is a, an After Effects comp. And before you start to cache things, then they're going to be um, slower to play. So you can see that this is the same original high quality out of After Effects. The windmill is actually a Cinema 4D file that I dropped into uh, After Effects. And then I extruded the type in After Effects all using the um, C4D rendering engine, which is now part of After Effects. And then I drop it in here. But every time I try to play this back, if I try to get the feeling of this um, animation, I can't because I can't play that back without rendering it. So here is a good use for the Cineform codec. So if I drop that in, right click on this and choose render and replace. You probably have a default setting of sequence. I've changed it to an individual clip based on QuickTime. And I've got three choices Cineform, 10 bit, 12 bit with alpha, 12 bit with alpha, alpha, and maximum bit depth. I'm going to choose 12 bit with alpha. What is the alpha? That's the alpha channel or the transparency. I'm not going to click OK. I've already done that. I don't want to waste your time. So let me just show you that when we look at it in the source monitor, if I drop this down and turn on my transparency grid, you can see just like an After Effects comp, I didn't have a black background. Everything is transparent. So if I convert this to something that isn't transparent, then it will be a solid black background. I said I've already done it over here. So let's look at the final render with the logo. So we come to the end. And there it comes in. And you'll see it's playing back much, much smoother. And the quality looks exactly the same. So if I turn off that bottom layer and we go back and turn off our transparency grid here, you look at the quality of both of these, they look the same. Every time you see my show opening, which again was originally done by extruding and rendering in After Effects with the Cinema 4D rendering engine, I don't want to play that back at the beginning. So that the opening of my show is also a render and replace After Effects comp rendered to Cineform 12-bit with Alpha. It's an amazing use for that. Another time you might want to use Cineform at its at high quality is if you're if you need to um, set something in like you need to burn something into a clip but not reduce its quality because you're going to go an output again. So if you wanted to to burn in the um, particular color grading that you wanted or uh, a visual effect shot that was comped on top of the clip and you don't want two separate clips, well, you can render that out. Now, I showed you that I'm working here with proxies and I generated those with a preset inside Premiere Pro and I'm able to play this 4K footage back much, much quicker. Um, I'm also on a laptop with USB 3 and an SSD internal uh, SSD external drive. So all my clips are playing back at the maximum throughput of USB 3. So if we look at my proxies, so I'm going to reveal this in Explorer. There is my proxy and you can see it's 225 megabytes. Uh, that proxy, um, let's go look at the media info of that. So this is MPEG-4, this is H.264 codec, and it's 1024 by 540. Um, that's because this is not UHD, this is true 4096, so this is a real 4K clip. That is the correct aspect ratio, that's a one-third um, of it, one-quarter of it. Um, and it, it, it 
there's no black bars along there. So if you are converting, uh, creating a proxy and you're converting it to something and you notice that you have black bars at the bottom, that means the aspect ratio uh, is incorrect. Get out your calculator, put in um, whatever your, your master size is and then divide that down into a, a third or a quarter or a half or whatever you want to do. So that makes these proxies much smaller. And so this is number one. And there's number one, the, the uh, full 4K is 1.31 gigabytes in size, and the proxy is 225. That's a good use for H.264, not for Cineform. Um, I could have used it, but like I said, it would make a, a much bigger file than, than 225 megabytes. To me, it's a nice, clean way to work. And if you're not familiar with proxies, um, I have a link at the end with my proxy tutorial, but basically once you create your proxies, you're toggling them on and off. That's high-res media, that's proxy. That's high-res, that's proxy. That's all you have to do. And when you output, you turn them off and export that out and get the best quality. You can see right away, um, scrubbing around, I can't really play that as easy as when I turn on my proxies and fly around. And then, as I said, there's my exported logo on the end, and you can see that with full transparency. So there's some good uses for the Cineform codec and some not good uses for Cineform codec. So if you're trying to find a, a proxy for your H.264 DSLR footage, you're probably not going to find it here. Um, it, unless you go really, really small. But uh, one of the reasons why uh, DSLR footage plays poorly on underpowered systems is the massive amounts of compression that it has. Especially uh, drone footage can be really compressed even more than something like a Canon 5D. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you're uh, new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more? Join us over on Patreon for as little as one little dollar a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.